Throughout the centuries, tales of mysterious creatures of the deep have captivated the minds of countless people all over the world. Stories of Greek gods that prowl a watery hell, giant whales that ingest human flesh, and colossal squids that sink ships have ingrained a deep respect and fear within humans for these creatures of the sea. It was the year 1817 in the New England coastal fishing village of Gloucester, Massachusetts, where a series of strange sightings provoked a fearful outcry from residents who quickly realized that the harbor may be inhabited by a sea serpent. The hysteria began on August 6th, when two women were walking along the shoreline. They looked out towards the horizon and glimpsed an enormous figure swimming in the harbor. But this was no ordinary animal. It was a hideous, scaly, serpentine-like creature, nearly 100 feet in length. They watched it as it slithered under the waves, disappearing from sight. On that very same day, a seasoned captain noticed something while on the bridge of his ship. It was the same dragon-like figure peeking out from the water. And just as quickly as it appeared, the monster propelled itself down into the abyss. Later that day, when he recounted the sighting to his friends, he claimed it was full of joints and resembled a string of buoys on a net. Naturally, they ridiculed the man with hoots and wails of laughter, mocking his unbelievable story. This wasn't the first sighting of a sea serpent in Gloucester. In 1638, a ship passing through the harbor noticed something that laid coiled up like a cable upon the rock at Cape Ann. One settler aboard the boat was about to shoot at it, but was dissuaded by two Indians who said that if he didn't kill it outright, they would all be in danger of their lives. But unlike 1638, these sightings would occur more frequently. Just a few days later, Mrs. Story saw what appeared to be a tree trunk that washed up onto the rocks of a harbor island. What she saw was no tree trunk. Its dark body suddenly started to convulse, startling poor Mrs. Story. But when she regained her composure and gazed out again, the creature was gone. Even her husband claimed to have seen the beast a few days later. The creature moved very rapidly through the water, I should say a mile or two in three minutes. And more evidence surfaced when another resident, William Rowe, reported seeing a figure in the water that same day, claiming its head was as broad as a horse. Within the same week, on August 12th, a visibly shaken shipmaster, Solomon Allen, told some friends that he saw something like the head of a rattlesnake, but nearly as large as the head of a horse. When he moved on the surface of the water, his motion was slow at times, playing in circles, and sometimes moving straight forward. Some residents were beginning to get hostile towards this invasive sea demon. On August 14th, a ship carpenter named Matthew Gaffney caught sight of it from a boat and shot at it. He turned towards us immediately after I had fired, uh, and I thought he was coming at us, but he sunk down and he went directly under our boat. Residents were now at a point of hysteria as sea serpent fever swept across the town. Countless people made their way to the shoreline, hoping to catch a glimpse of the prehistoric monster. Even David Humphreys, a former aide to George Washington, visited Gloucester to interview witnesses who informed him that the serpent's features were much like the head of a turtle and larger than any head on any dog, with a 12-inch spear bulging from its skull. During that month of August, similar reports seemed to emerge daily from sailors, merchants, clergymen, people from all walks of life. Regardless of the accounts, the same question continued to arise. What was this beast lurking in the harbor? Was it a misidentification of some type of marine mammal? Or could it have been a dinosaur that survived extinction? Or was it simply a tale that had become more incredible with each retelling? Word had spread quickly, with the reports catching the attention of the Natural History Collective, the Linnaean Society of New England. And after a brief investigation, the Society published a pamphlet declaring that it was an entirely new genus known as Scoliophus atlanticus. They claimed that it was a breakthrough in the field of natural history, and there were even some reputable sources who came out in support of their alleged discovery. But newspapers viewed it as a sensationalized hoax meant to promote the city of Gloucester, and playwrights would ridicule the city with plays like Gloucester Hoax, a dramatic jeu d'esprit in three acts. By the end of the year, there had been 18 documented sightings of the creature. And while sea serpent fever has died down since 1817, there have been reports of denizens of the deep that have occasionally surfaced off the coast of New England. But whether these sightings were of a creature beyond belief, or if they were just a sensationalized interpretation by an excited town, the mystery of the Gloucester Sea Serpent still lingers to this day.